What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy 16. With the official announcement that Final Fantasy 16 has sold 3 million copies on the PlayStation 5, a lot of people have been discussing whether or not it should be considered a true RPG, as well as the fact that whether or not it should be even considered a true Final Fantasy game. In this video, we're going to discuss these different questions and break down our overall thoughts on this controversial topic. If you like these type of videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Now to the video. Let's just jump right into the first aspect. Is this considered a true RPG? And I think overall, when you think of, um, you know, an RPG, a lot of people talk about, you know, The Witcher. They talk about other Final Fantasy games like Final Fantasy 7, the original Mario RPG. Um, a lot of people kind of debate Mass what effect. is a Mass Effect and what is an RPG based on you know kind of when you think about the overarching definition of an RPG, a lot of people kind of have their own kind of thoughts about what should be considered one. A lot of people would say that based on the definition alone, that it is basically a game where you are fulfilling a kind of a path where or a goal. You're playing a role as a character in this universe, whether you are taking specific actions or you're following a narrative of some kind following through a story. And a lot of people debate whether or not, you know, what is the specific requirements in order for you to reach that level of being an RPG. But remember, there are so many variants of RPGs out there. And so when we are going to kind of analyze this, I'll kind of let you first talk about what you think overall in Jell Kill about, do you think that Final Fantasy 16 is an RPG? And then I'll jump into my take about it. So do you think, that Final Fantasy 16 reaches that barrier as a true RPG title. Yeah, and when you, you know, you made a lot of great points there. And when you talk about RPG, that's role playing game for those that are not familiar with it, or JRPG, which you hear a lot of, which is Japanese role playing game. And sometimes it's hard to tell the big difference between the two. One is made by a Japanese company, the other is not. Um, that's kind of one of the big distinctions. But in my opinion, I do think this is a role playing game, but a watered down version of a role-playing game, an RPG, if you want to call it, because I think it has RPG mechanics, but it doesn't It doesn't give you a full array of it. Now, a lot of people look at RPG as, do you customize your character? A lot of people make that, is that's the, the true identity of an RPG, but I don't fully believe that because if that's true, where you just make your character in this fictional world, great RPGs like The Witcher wouldn't count. And I think Witcher is one of the best RPGs that have been created, and that's, an open world RPG, right? To me, I classify this as an action RPG. There isn't a lot of customization to the main character, but there is still leveling up of skills. There is still item customization, although it is not vast. And I do think that it hurts, you know, the overall RPG mechanics of this game. Um, but you still see some of that RPG stuff and you are playing Clive. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but through this adventure, um, but there's still some of that RPG mechanics that are embedded in there. It's watered down. It's not a true vast, you know, customize your character, have dialogue trees. Those are not there, but you still have some skill trees when it comes to the dominance. You still have some skill leveling up and you do have some item customization. So I do classify this as an RPG. Yeah, because when you look at like, and this is from Techopedia, this is from Britannica. These are some you know, really you know, reliable sources, they divide really RPG kind of entirety um, into many subdivisions, whether it's going to be an action RPG, adventure RPG, strategy RPG, MMORPG, JRPG, like it, there's so many different variants of this. And, and generally I would agree with you when it comes to the action RPG, I feel like when you look at the overall definition, it's games mostly focused on combat aspects rather than the narrative ones. Battles usually occur in real time and the player frequently control a single character rather than a party and they, a lot of the similarities between this are like diablo zelda games dark souls i mean they're they're very you can kind of see the similarities that you know final fantasy 16 and you're controlling clive you can see that you following one character's adventure right and adjusting that person's character and i think that's something that is you can make a comparison to how final fantasy 16 handles it being an rpg compared to other ones even final fantasy 15 for example like, you know, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, I mean, you can kind of make the case that, yes, they, they may not be all the same, you know, RPG style, but you can still make the case that Final Fantasy XVI is an RPG. It's just an a, a action RPG. And how much of that is really going to be up to the gamer, how much they want to, you know, say that it's an RPG or not. But overall, if you're just following the definition, 
of what an RPG is. I mean, a lot of games would consider to be RPGs, technically, if you're following a narrative. I have a question for you, Mars. What do you feel is, in your opinion, an RPG? Do well, you focus more on customization, or do you focus in more on um, kind of the RPG elements of scaling and leveling up and, and items? See, the biggest thing for me is I always felt like RPG games were more about the decisions that you make alter your pathways. I feel like that was always my take on what an RPG was. Like, I wouldn't even consider, like, Legend of Zelda a RPG game. RPG. Yeah, because of the fact I felt like it was more just an action adventure game because you're following a narrative that was already written out for you in a de like a certain destiny that you're going to get no matter what. And I feel like that I feel like is closer to just being an action adventure rather than being an RPG because I feel like you're you're yeah, you're playing a role as as, as Link, but you're you're following a specific role that's following a direct path. Right? I could I could see people make the case that this is not an RPG because, you know, you're not made, you're not changing or altering anything other than your skill traits and your abilities, right? I could see people make that claim because how many games nowadays can you have adjustments to your traits? I feel like everybody, every action yeah, a lot game, of games have RPG yeah, elements in them. Yeah, every action game nowadays has some sort of a case where you can typically make the case that Hi-Fi Rush is an action RPG because it's the same thing. You can alter your skills and your abilities like. You can strengthen them, you can weaken them, but at the end of the day, you're not making decisions that can change or alter the game, right? So that's why I'm saying, like, if you're using the specific definitions of an action RPG, you can include a lot of games yeah. that use RPG mechanics or skill or those actions. This falls in that category if we're using kind of. Yeah, like if, I, if I'm using that definition, you would technically consider Final Fantasy 16 an action RPG based yeah. on that criteria. Um, me personally, I feel like when I look at it, if I, I focus more on the decision making as being the biggest thing for me, if I'm following just the definition alone, yeah, I can agree. It's an action RPG. But if I was, if you were to tell me outright, I would say I try to drift closer to an action adventure game because it's more of a specific pathway versus like The Witcher versus like Mass Effect. Like, yeah, there are a lot of times there are very, you're destined to follow a specific pathway to the end. But there's a lot of actions you can take throughout the game that can alter the story or change or shift things along the way that can make it different. And I think even like Cyberpunk, like Cyberpunk, technically you can make a lot of decisions that can change what happens in the game. And I think that's where like a lot of people say one well, of the first RPGs ever was Dungeons and Dragons, right? And that's kind of the whole aspect of that, where you pick and choose certain things that occur um, and go from there. The second question that we're really going to be discussing is a lot of people were saying that Final Fantasy 16 shouldn't even be considered a Final Fantasy game because Final Fantasy games always regard themselves or connect themselves to RPG mechanics in a lot of ways, whether it's strategy based RPG games or even more recently action based ones. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, I'll answer this one right away. I, I think that's just a bunch of bull crap. I mean, to call Final Fantasy 16 not a true Final Fantasy game, I think is a little a, a little bit of a reach. I think it, whether it's um, it's people just trying to hate on the game or not, I think Final Fantasy 16, if you're trying to find a clear mirror to this, it's Final Fantasy 15. I mean, it, it's it's I played and beat Final Fantasy 15. It's very similar to this game. I mean, I, at the end of the day, like, yeah, there are some clear differences for sure. I think Final Fantasy 16 is definitely doing way better in the sales department compared to 15, but they are well, very not similar. Not overall sales, actually, it's reverse because it one's multiple. Well, right, right now, yeah, that's yeah. the big difference. Is that one is more exclusive? I think it's a higher quality, well, higher, quality higher quality, or higher, more hype behind 16 than 15. I think 15 had some really cool components that a lot of people got excited about, but 16 was hyped for a while now. And I think that when you think when you compare them, the action mechanics are identical. The only big differences that I would say right away was that you can't control your your squad mate which in 15 you could do, in 16 you can't. And I think a lot of people would say that that is one of the components that makes like similar similarities between previous Final Fantasy games like, you know, 7 Remake and, and others that were, you can control your, your squad mates. And I think that's something that, yes, there is a difference here, but I it still is a Final Fantasy game. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's an action adventure, you know, similar to that of 15 and 7. It just has some things that are not the same, like, Picking and choosing what your what your allies do, and in some cases you can actually tell them, to, "Hey, go attack this way." But then it's not it's as specific, yeah, or it's, it's not a as system. yeah, command it's system. command system, and it's not as I guess the biggest thing a lot of people say is the stats like make a big difference. Like specific stat traits of different abilities you use can alter the attack 
you know, percentages of critical hits and not. I think that's what like Seven Remake was trying to do and 15, not as much, but you know, that's like what a lot of people talk about, but I really don't think it's, it not, shouldn't be considered a Final Fantasy. I mean, I think it's still pretty, pretty much similar to the previous ones we've seen recently. But, uh, but Angelica, what do you think? You think this should be considered a Final Fantasy game? I, I do, but it's not your father's Final Fantasy. I mean, if you're looking, a lot of people referred Final Fantasy back in the day as a turn-based game, and the last turn-based game was before, was it Final Fantasy 13? So, I mean, they have been pulling farther and farther away um, and becoming more and more of an action RPG, if you want to call it, ever since Final Fantasy 13. And we've been seeing that more and more as these titles come out, like with 15, like with 7 Remake, and they're even on this one um, pulled even further away from that command system that you kind of mentioned with your support system, right? So this has become way more westernized, I would say. Um, but the settings and the characters still feel like a Final Fantasy game. And so they've added some things from other Square Enix like Kingdom Hearts who helped work on this game. Um, and there's also mention of Devil May Cry kind of aspects in the gameplay that make it more modernized and more the fluid, the fighting, um, than in previous like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XV, um, which I think are actually improvements. But I do wish some of the Final Fantasy aspects, like the command system of your party, like some of the RPG elements of skill base, uh, skill trees and leveling up, um, probably could they could invest a little bit more in that but i yeah. do think it's a final fantasy game just not a, your father's final fantasy this is yeah. like modern final fantasy it's still a modern final fantasy game. yeah i feel like it, it does break away from a lot of the, the the original concepts that square enix had always prioritized in final fantasy but games it's been a while like this is not a new concept this has been going on they, they've been doing this for a while yeah i can agree yeah. with that i mean like, like i said before 15 was the, I, other than Bruce 7 remake 15 was the last Final Fantasy major installment that they had, and it was very similar. It, a lot of people like are freaking out about this, the combat styles. I'm like, it's it's very similar to the 15. Like, I don't know where people are starting to lose their minds over this. I mean, yeah. I, granted, I think this is probably a better rendition of it than 15 was, but I think that 15's combat I thought was pretty fluid. It, it reminds yeah. me a lot of how Kingdom Hearts 3 adapted their combat mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why they, that's where they kind of get a lot of their influence from it. it, it believe it or not, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 combat system was probably one of the best Square Enix combat systems they've ever made. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah and, cool. and, you know, I was glad to see that they kind of mirrored Kingdom Hearts 3 in its way of it, of its combat. Um, but overall, we're going to kind of finish off with our final verdicts of the game. We're going to talk about some good, some bad that we saw. Um, we're not going to give official rating for today. We're just going to kind of give what our kind of overall feedback of the game has been. Um, if I was going to give something that I felt was good, I, I thought the combat system, as I already mentioned, was was pretty fluid. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people out there um, have tried to make a fuss over this whole, like, click one button Bug and Nash. game button Nash to yeah. victory type of stuff. And yeah, you know what? They have they have accessibility features that basically give people who, who, who can't do all the different buttons one button to kind of do it all to help guide them along the way and if you want to play that way you technically can there's no one stopping you from putting on all those different equipments and auto mate auto doing the game yeah yeah there's nothing stopping you from doing that there's also nothing stopping you from play from putting the game on easy difficulty on anything other than dark souls um and <laughs> and play on easy yeah. i could play halo 2 on easy and yeah. watch the game in a heartbeat if i wanted to but that's the point you have a choice to do those things but yeah, I think the combat is pretty pretty fluid. I mean, you could do a lot of dodging, you could do parrying, you could do a lot of these combos. And yeah, you know what happens in these type of games? You know, you're going to hit a lot of button mashing for a time until you start unlocking combinations, right? Where that's kind of like how these games start out early, early on. Like, and I mentioned this before, Kingdom Hearts has always been a series following in that same issue. Yeah, if but you don't know, very, we're fans of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it, so. if, if you yeah, <laughs> if you don't know that, we played every single Kingdom Hearts. And, and in the very beginning, you always start out with literally nothing. And as you progress and level up, you start getting more different combinations and, and attack powers. And that's where really where the game starts to become more fluid. And if you're playing on a difficulty that's higher, and I think that's one of the criticisms, and I'll mention that um, in, you know in my final verse, but the criticisms is that it feels like it is really easy like i didn't I, the when only you, uh, yeah, the only time i ever somewhat felt like i was gonna sweat was during one of the you know 
uh, the dominant battle, and I feel like that one was a little bit like, oh, I mean, that was a big hit. Let me uh, let me get my potion ready. Like other than that, everything else has been kind of a clap fest. And you know, I'm a gamer, you're a gamer. Like we we've have experience playing a lot of different types of games. Um, but even then, like it was it was super easy. It just kind of gave off like the, you know, uh, wow, that was really I kind of cake walk through that one. Um, but the game looks great. Some issues you gotta think about are like the, the there's there's some polishing issues that you know, most modern gaming has nowadays. So yeah, I, I kind of wish I didn't have to see it, but you do. Yeah. Not Jedi um, Survivor bad, but it's still yeah. It, it's just like kind of one of those little things. Like you know, yeah. I, I can deal with it, but I'm sure there are people out there that if you see the if you ever see you know we a lot we do live streams uh, on our channel and you see the description below um, to our Twitch channel, but we also do it on YouTube. We on during our live streams we saw flickers of the game and that was a confirmed glitch that happens. I don't know how often it happens for a lot of people, but it is a confirmed glitch that occurs and it was annoying. But I dealt with it. But I'm sure some people might not want to see that. Um, and no matter which mode I did, whether it's performance or quality, if either one didn't matter. I feel like I think performance was worse um, because it, it technically was the shading. The, the shading uh, flickers were having problems. I even went into the settings of the PlayStation and turned off variable refresh rates to keep it consistent at one level, and it still didn't do a thing. So, uh, no matter what I tried, it didn't work. So that was it's just a little polishing problems, but I overall has have been having a good experience. Um, I think right now the overall ratings are at Metacritic around like an 88. Yeah, um, it, I, I think that's I'm field. not going to give my official ratings. I want to play more yeah. before I ever do that. But I mean, like, it seems like that's a good spot for what Final Fantasy is hitting right now. Um, I'm not I don't think they I think overall, that's pretty good overall. I, what I think they should be at. But uh, Angela Kill, what's your what, what's your verdict on, you know, this game overall? Yeah, I agree with you. And, and we want to that's why we're not giving the scores, because we've been so slammed. We want to finish the game and give our before we get. But I'm in that similar range right now with the amount of hours we played. I'm at an 85 to, nine, to 89 um, for this game. And it's a strong game, and, and Metacritic gave it that 88. It's the highest rated mainline game over the last 17 years since Final Fantasy, what is it, uh, 12, I think. So mm -hmm. it's got a pretty good score, and you've hit a lot of good things. And I'll just add to it, the gameplay really is the, I think, the upper echelon of this game. It's the star of the show. Um, you see the mixture of some Final Fantasy concepts, some Devil May concepts, but you really do see some... For those Kingdom Hearts fans, you see some of that Kingdom Hearts concepts in there too. Feels like it's a nice blend of all that together, and you get a pretty strong gameplay. Um, the music is another thing. It's it's not a thing a lot of people talk about. Me and you are big fans of uh, game music. Um, I do think this will probably be near the Game Awards for best OES, uh, OSTs. Um, it'll be in competition for it. And the boss fights. I think the boss fights have cinematics look epic, and even in that fight, and you even see uh, some of the clips of your stream. There's some pretty cool uh, boss action fight. Bad uh, story pacing. I don't think the story is bad. I know people are mixed on the story. It's more the pacing. And a lot of people talking about, wow, there's so many cutscenes. Square Enix has had a history of long cutscene games. Kingdom Hearts 3 had over 10 hours of cutscene. Kingdom Hearts, I mean, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake had over 9. Final Fantasy 13 had over 9. I think this is running around 11. But what hurts is the prologue. It feels like every few steps you're running into another cutscene. It's hard to get emulated into the story. I wish they did a little bit of job of pacing, but um, you mentioned a couple of other things that I won't go into. I agree with you on some of the other poor things, but overall, strong game. Yeah, and I think that's going to be it for our discussion. Do you think that Final Fantasy 16 is a true RPG? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.